perfection, listen, you're not going to be perfect. You're not going to always get it right. So stop. When I say stop, I'm saying stop trying to be perfect. If you are too busy being perfect, then where is the room for God to come in your life and just show out? That's why God says in your weakness, his strength is made perfect. See, a lot of times we try to be perfect. We want things to go just the way we want them to go. We want it to go from point A all the way to Z or from 1 to 100 in that order. And anytime something gets out of order pertaining to our perception, we have a fit. We get all discombobulated. Uh, we get weary in our faith in God. We get weary in the word. And that don't make any sense. You know why? Because God's word is true. And so anytime you find yourself where you are frustrated because of things aren't going the way you thought they would go, then you have to check yourself and ask yourself, am I living in a life of perfection right now? And your answer is yes. And the word perfection is coming from the space of pride. Prideful people don't like to make mistakes. Prideful people don't like for people to tell them when they are in error. They catch a spirit of offense and a spirit of fault finding. I can talk about it because I was one of those persons. And if I don't get my seek and have my seek life like I'm supposed to with God, guess what? Your girl will be offended over here. I'll be a fault finding over here. I'll be in a space of trying to make it work the way I want it to work. But I know it doesn't work like that. I know it doesn't. You'll find yourself just like I found myself in a space of frustration because what I wanted to happen or how I thought it should happen wasn't happening because I was trying to make it too perfect. I was trying to line things up according to Will Sanja. And a lot of times God say it ain't going to line up the way you want to line up with Sanja. It's not going to line up that way. You're not going to know everything. You're not going to know everything. That's why God said he has secrets and he do reveal them to the upright, but sometimes he ain't going to reveal stuff to you. And sometimes you just got to be okay with not knowing. That's called real trust because you're following God when you can't see him, when you can't trace him. And if you're trying to trace God and trying to see him in every single move that you make, guess what? You're going to feel like the three blind mice. You're going to feel like a cat chasing you. You are. You're going to feel like God has forsaken you. You're going to feel like God hadn't heard your prayer. The enemy will work on you like nothing else. He will. He will work on you so badly. And he'll pull your heartstrings. And you know what God says about the heart. He said the heart is what? Deceitful. And when you're too busy trying to be perfected as far as being perfect, then guess what? The enemy will play on your heartstrings through your emotions. And you won't even realize that that's what's going on. You think, oh, this is just natural. I'm supposed to feel this way. But God is saying, no, that heart is deceitful. And that's what God said. Guard your heart, your eye gates and your ear gates. Watch what you're saying out of your mouth. Watch what you're allowing to get into your ear. Watch who's giving you advice. Watch all these things. God said, be watchful as well as pray, right? Men are to always pray and never faint. Why are you praying? You're praying because you're getting your strength from God. Because when you do pray, you're supposed to be praying according to whose will? God's will, which means what? You're praying the word of God. And the more you pray the word of God, that means what? God is listening to you. Because God says what? He is with you. That's what God says what? Now this I am confident in the Lord that when I ask according to his will, he hears me. What did God further further along goes to say? That when he hear you, that petition, that that petition is really what? His desire. Because you're praying what he said. But if you're in a space to where you're trying to be perfect, where you want it to go the way you want it to go, you're going to always be in that space where you're being ruled by your emotions and your feelings and your heartstrings. That deceitful heart will have you over there making decisions based on what? Based on how you're feeling. And that's you making healthy decisions. And God said he does not want you to make healthy decisions based off of your deceitful heart. Everybody's heart is deceitful. 
That's why God said, before you present yourself to him, before you come into his presence, ask to do what? Have a pure heart, purged heart, and what kind of hands? Clean hands. Because if you just step before God and don't have that heart purged, you'll be praying to God. You'll actually be complaining to God. It won't be a prayer. Your heart will be all in it. Heart strings. And you, ain't nobody got time for that. God ain't got time to be listening to what your heart got to say. He wants you to speak his desires. And his desire is that you prosper, be in good health, even as your soul should prosper. He has the best for you. He has already gifted it to you, but you've got to put, position yourself in a space to where you allow his strength to be, to be made perfect in your weakness. It's okay to be weak. It's okay to not to know. It's okay to wait. That's what it boils down to. <laughs> you tired of waiting. We all get there. I get there. I, I, I pray for patience. I do. I ask God, God, please help me. Because I'm the type of girl I want it like that. God, all right now, uh, hey, God, it's been a month. It's been two months. God, I'm waiting on you. I'm waiting on you. So you got to make sure you're in that space to where you're asking God to, to allow you to wait. Because it's a blessing when you wait. God said, they that wait upon him, their strength shall be renewed, right? They will mount up with, with wings as eagles. They will run and not get weary, walk and not faint. God says what? He said, be not weary in well-doing. For in due season you shall reap. If you what? Faint not. And God just told you that you ain't going to faint because you waited on him. And he's giving you your strength. So listen. If it's taking a long time, that's fine. That's why God says, though the vision tarry, wait for it. Why? Because it's indeed going to come to pass. God just keeps backing his word up. But if you choose not to rely on his word, which is his law for you, which gives you your right to receive everything, every benefit that he has for you. If you are not in that space, you're going to always think that you're left out. You're going to always think that God has forgotten about you. And you're going to feel like you want to give up. And if you're not careful, the enemy will have you on the edge. And he'll go ahead and have you to jump. Jump, which means what? Forget about the promises of God. And he'll have you to settle in things that God has never called you to settle in. You'll be like the prodigal son. You'll be over there eating with this pig, with the swine. And knowing you can be home eating well robed well being received well but if you allow those heart strings if you allow yourself to become perfect perfect in your eyes then you will be over there with the pigs in other words you will be disappointed you'll be in a low space and you know that's contrary to the will of God for your life God said he wished he said that you should be above only and not beneath but you'll be living in a space of just enough, of almost. I could have did it. I should have did it. I almost did it. All because you had to be perfect. You had to know it all. And God is saying you don't need to be in that space. Because that's the space of pride. And that's an abomination. God doesn't like pride for people. He doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't like proper people. So you got to check yourself. Just like I have to check myself every single day. I have to check myself every single day. I wasn't always like this. I was one of those ones that got to be perfect. And then, oh boy, and if I made a mistake, oh, I beat myself up. Yes, I did. I used to beat myself up. Oh, when I say beat myself up, that means I would play over and over in my head what I did wrong. And I'll say, you're not good enough. You still got a little work. I was so hard on myself. And God had to change me. In other words, he had to help me to see the way he sees me. And when I was able to get to that point, then I was like, you know, I'm just right, just how I am. Because I don't have to know everything. I don't have to know everything. I don't, know how, I don't have to know how it's going to play out. I just got to do what? Trust God. And then I didn't have to worry about that Jezebel experience anymore. I want to be in control. 
And sometimes you could be so wanted to be in control to where you will begin to manipulate things. Manipulate things and manipulate people. And that's not of God. God don't have to manipulate nothing. He say be and it is. His will be done in earth as it is in heaven. It's all about what he wants because what God wants for you and what he wants for me is nothing but his best. So stop trying to be perfect. Ain't nobody perfect. Nobody. Only God. Only God. So why not let the one who is perfect rule in your life today? Trust him and watch what will happen. I hope y'all got this, but if you didn't get this thing, rewind and watch again. But in the meantime, in between time, if you take just a little bit of what I'm telling you, apply to your life to the best of your ability, you won't ever, 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 ever have the mask to smile well because your smiles will always be genuine. Be blessed, stay blessed, be blessed, stay blessed, be blessed, stay blessed. Y'all know what's coming next. Ciao.